uh, with all the English speaking players. She introduces herself as Julie. That's the name that she chose for herself. Okay. Okay. Um, so the technique about finding a double partner is being be aggressive, go ask, ask coaches, ask players, and uh, that's how it works. Um, in my experience, yes, I, I think you, you need to be open. You need to, um, know what you're looking for in a doubles partner, what kind of game. And then based on that, um, ask around and see which, which partner will, will agree to, to play with you. And usually the agreement is verbal, right? Yes. And you share coaching and travel uh, expenses. I think that just depends on on the partnership. Um, uh, Julie and I work together with um, with uh, Torsten, but she also has her own um, her own Chinese coach. So I think the I think in every situation it's unique. It just depends on the the player. So you have a you have a common coach, plus each one of the, you have an individual coach. Yes. Okay. Now, what was your result with Pexy? Uh, you stayed with her for a year or two? We played for two seasons. Two seasons. Yes. So that we two seasons, how are you? Yeah. We, um, our best result was uh, making the Wimbledon final in 2018. Um, and we also qualified for the year in championships. So we were the sixth best team out of the eight that qualified. Um, and outside of that, we won uh, five other tournaments, WTA tournaments. So I, I think we had a very, very solid career um, together. In 2019, we ended up being the ninth team. So we missed qualifying for the championships by by one spot. Um, we still had a great year, but uh, it just wasn't good enough. Um, so, yeah, I think overall it was successful, and uh, I learned a lot from her. Mm-hmm. Now, with the new partner, Ifan Chu, what is your goal? What is your goal this year? I mean, our goal, I think, is the same. We we want to try and win a Grand Slam. Uh, we've both won uh, tournaments at the WTA level. We've both uh, played a Grand Slam final, but neither of us have a women's doubles uh, Grand Slam under our belts. And I I think that's that's definitely our goal. Um, yeah. is to yeah win tournaments, but we we want to try and win a Grand Slam. Mm-hmm. How do you win a Grand Slam? How do you train? How you, what do you do? Um, well, if you think about it, you need to win six matches in two weeks. So <laughs> you need you need to not get hurt during those two weeks. You need to not get sick during those two weeks. You need to get a little bit lucky that even though you're playing well, sometimes you play great, but your opponent just plays better. You To win a Grand Slam, you have to be a little bit lucky. Things need to fall in place for you. Um, you need to play well when it counts. Uh, you need to... You have to win six matches, so that's 12 sets, and guess what? You can still lose six of those sets. Just don't lose two sets in the same day. <laughs> So yeah. you, you you prepare like you would for any other tournament. You go to every pack practice with a with a mindset, with a with a plan, with things that you're working on, and uh, you go to the practice with 100% effort and intention, and uh, you you execute it to the best of your abilities. Now let's talk about luck. Uh, how lucky are you? Uh, talk about elaborate a little bit on the luck part because a lot of players and even high level players talk about this word luck. You gotta be lucky. What do you mean by that? Well, I think you're as lucky as uh, the positions that you put yourself in. I mean, a lot of people have told me, "Oh, you're so lucky to have found housing in uh, so many cities around the world." Uh, for example, when I was playing uh, ITF, but 
I mean, I reached out to people and I asked people if they had friends, if I could reach out to their friends or something, you know, so I was very persistent. And then I ended up finding housing. Um, So was it luck or was it persistence? Um, I think, uh, I think the more often you put yourself in the right situation, the more often you work on, um, you work on the serves, you work on the returns, you work on uh, certain aspects of your game in that moment when you're break point down and you hit that ace, did you get lucky or is it looking back on all those hours of, uh, of uh, serves that you hit all those baskets? So I think right. you're going to get lucky. I think people call it luck or, or it's just uh, things falling into place. I think uh, if you do the right things and work on them at some point, if you believe in them, they will pay off and help you when you need them. Great, great. Seku Radio, Sarasota, Florida, April 1st, 2020. My guest today was Nicole Melikard. Nicole, what would be your last statement to conclude the show? Uh, We wish you a good season, but unfortunately with this uh, coronavirus, we all have to wait. But say something to close the show the interview uh, I would say um, no matter what people are involved in um, go with your gut feeling and to always do the best that you can and especially in this times with the coronavirus uh, no matter what your belief is on the situation I think people need to take it more seriously than not because if we panic or we do too much, it's better than not doing enough. But I think that's anything in life. I think if you, if you go for it and, uh, and maybe it just wasn't enough, at least you tried. But if you don't go for it, you don't know, you don't know how far maybe you could have gone. Okay. Thank you, Nicole. Thank you for your time. Thank you for accepting to be a guest on Seku Radio. We're looking forward to uh, follow you in 2020. And all the best of luck. Thank you so much.